Welcome back everyone. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to build your own self-centering mortising jig. This is not a new jig. This is a jig that I actually found in Wood Magazine and it's been featured many other places as well. Sometimes they're made of plexiglass, sometimes they're made of plywood like this. Now this is a jig that's designed to be used with your plunge router. I, as do many woodworkers, regard plunge routers as an essential tool around the shop. It makes joinery work a lot more fun and a lot easier to do. So I would definitely add a plunge router to my Christmas list if you don't already have one. So we've got two mending plates taped together. I've marked the center point. Created a mark so I can get my drill bit started. I'm going to drill through both plates at the same time. Ideally, you want these mending plates to have centered holes, but in my case, these did not come that way, but luckily they are opposing holes, so that actually will balance out pretty well. So the main components for this jig are, of course, the two mending plates that I drilled a center hole through, some scrap wood, uh, there's a one and a half inch block of fir, there's some half inch plywood. So this jig will be six inches by 12 inches in length. And of course, you need a plunge router. So now I've got my center line. Next I'm going to rip this block in half. I've marked where each end of the mending plate needs to be. Now I just have to punch some holes for drilling. I'm going to see if I can get away with some brass screws first. don't really want them that tight. I want some movement in there. That actually could work. That's actually not too bad. I'm going to countersink on the top plate a little bit. So I've got this down on a piece of test wood. Obviously I'm not ready to cut yet. There's nothing uh, in the surface here, but I've got the main part of the jig set up. The next part I need to do is make the guide fences that will go on the surface. That'll allow me to guide my plunge router in two directions. So the one thing you want to notice uh, on your plunge router on the sides and on the ends, you'll see center marks that indicate where the router bit will enter the wood. On the surface of my board, I have the center line mark that I drew out earlier with pencil. And what I'm going to do is line up the center line marks on the router. So now that I've got this lined up, I'm going to cut the parts that I need for my fence using the other half of the plywood that I had. So 
So you want your fence to just barely be touching the side of the router. Completely optional, and it's just a decorative element really, but I'm going to put a strip of walnut that I have left over from a previous project. So I've got this running essentially in a track with basically no effort. All I would have to do is use the plunge and move it across. And that's all I have to focus on. So the next step is to create a stop block on either end, essentially a starting block and a finishing block so I can control the side to side movement. So I'm gonna take this scrap piece of poplar that I had in my bin and I'm gonna use that. So now I have the two stop blocks that I need. I, I don't want to put anything fancy on here to try and make them adjustable and permanent only because I've got these big handles on either side and everything has to be low profile. I'm simply going to use these plastic squeeze clamps will do just fine. I'll drop a block on either end. That'll dictate my distance right there. I can move the block out. So these stop blocks should do just fine. So now I've got a spiral bit in my router and I'm going to do a first pass. And there I have my max mortise length. I can do anything up to this size. So now that I've got that set up, I can do another pass and another pass. And I can increase my depth on the piece underneath it. We're just gonna use that as a test piece. Not too bad, so that self-centering feature does help quite a bit. I might do a few fine adjustments to it, but I think overall I'm happy with it. It's almost dead center. It's effortless. It's really effortless to do it this way. Locking this onto a piece of wood, and this is a smaller piece, and this is why I tested on it, because this is the challenge. Doing it on a smaller piece of wood, I would normally get my router table out and set up a really complicated rig to do this kind of a mortise. I don't have to even think about it. I just put this jig on, line everything up to center, which the self-centering feature of this works really well. Get my stop block set up, which at some point I'm gonna figure out uh, what the scale is here for my stop blocks. Throw my clamps on for the stop blocks, and I'm ready to go. The only thing you have to do is plot where your mortises are going to be. Now, because I don't, I don't have a piece of plexiglass in here, I can't see through it, but I can look through this piece here and I can line up any marks that I have on my board. Now you might ask, what about cutting end grain and working on short pieces? That happens sometimes. Can you use this jig if you do that? Well, I'm about to find out. Turn, I have the jig turned upside down right now. I'm just going to basically drop it in over top of the hole. 
clamp it together nice and tight. And then I'm gonna take it over to my woodworking vise. All right, so I have this clamped into my woodworking vise. I'm just gonna put one stop lock in for this one. I forgot I already had a rabbit cut in on this side from this piece of scrap wood. But that's the actual mortise I just cut in on a small piece of end grain. Once again, I'm really impressed with how the self-centering feature works on this. Well, that concludes making a self-centering mortising jig for your plunge router. It takes seconds to set up. Adding the additional guide rails to my design made all the difference to me. I don't even have to think about it. I just put my router down and go. The only thing I have to think about on this jig is to set up my beginning stop block and my end stop block, and then I'm ready to go. There's nothing new about this jig. It's been done many times before, but the difference with my jig is that I built in guide rails so I didn't have to use guide bushings on my router. I'm going to make a few fine adjustments to this jig and in subsequent videos I'm going to show you how I turn this into a loose tenon and mortising system. If you want to buy me a beer, head on over to my Patreon page right here. Please remember to like, share, and subscribe if you haven't done so already. There are a couple more videos to watch on this side. Until next time, thanks for watching and have a great day.